Welcome to this Android channel, and this is the Android News. We are Thursday, August the 23rd, 2018. Today, in our Android News, we have an uh, interesting, um, very interesting look into how Android devices are sending a lot of data to Google. It is found that idle Android devices tend to send out about 10 times more data than Apple devices do to their parent company. Uh, Android is really, really sending a lot of stuff. And it shows how the uh, Android ecosystem is actually really, really doing a lot to look at every aspect of your browsing and um, what you do on your device. We're going to have a separate video today on this. We're going to talk about it. I, I want to kind of share that information. And it gave me an idea of, okay, how can you lower the amount of data your Android device is sending back to Google? Uh, we'll have some tips and a few videos talking about it today. I think a lot of you might be interested in that. The same study that is showing that a lot of data is being sent to Google is also showing that there's another aspect of the Google ecosystem that's a little uh, controversial now. So. Advertising a ID and advertising data should technically stay anonymous, meaning you can't really know who is behind or what is behind that type of data. But the problem is with all the apps and all the ways that Google is tracking you, um, there's kind of a privacy advocate group in the United States that says, you know what, Google can link any account or specific individuals just by looking at the full data that they're receiving from a user, meaning they can actually use the different data and know that it's actually you. But the problem is, it's supposed to stay anonymous, so it's creating kind of a little privacy problem here. And like I said, we're going to talk about it today. The new G Suite uh, for Google is actually going to make it easier to actually interact with the different apps like you know, Calendar and Gmail and so on, by giving you the possibility to have miniature versions within another app of, say, Gmail, for example, that is usable, that you could actually interact with, and mean you don't have to switch apps to really work with the different apps. You might be able to just work on some of the apps sometimes just by staying within another app within G Suite. So this is kind of interesting, and I'm, I'm looking at all of that, and you know, this is going to be another thing that's going to be interesting to look at here on the Android channel. And of course, uh, we'll have lots of videos coming up. The um, interesting aspects of Google when it um, is actually tracking you is that, you know, when people use VPNs, it's creating a short circuit. There's a little something that the VPN prevents Google from actually tracking you knowing more about you and this is why Google is actually looking into adding VPN like features into different uh, different services including inside Android and Google Chrome that would be secure in a way that you could use their service instead of a VPN so it would kind of you know short circuit the VPNs in, in, in one way but at the same time they would be able to still, you know, stay in control of for example, advertising, for example, know what you like, what you want to hear, what you, what you, you know, go and search on Google and so on. So it's like a half VPN because it's like a VPN that's giving you protection against tracking from, say, governments with encryption and all of that, but at the same time, still maintaining a Google control over your data. Google has announced that uh, some Chromebooks that would get Linux because they had announced a few months back that Linux apps might be running within Chromebooks and, and the Chromebook system. Well, it seems that many devices will be left out, including a three-year-old Chromebook. So um, we're wondering, you know, what the minimum requirement will be because there's some interesting aspect here where a lot of devices seem to not be able to do so. And finally, is gaming Android smartphones really something people want? A study seems to point out that sales of gaming smartphones are not really that good. 
and uh, it might be simply a way for a lot of companies to try to increase sales in a time where people are just buying less and less smartphones. So that's going to be interesting to see, but um, I don't know of anybody that buys a smartphone for gaming purposes. And this was the tech news for Android on this Thursday, August 23rd, 2018. If you enjoy our videos, please subscribe, give us a thumbs up. Thank you for watching.